Hey what is going on guys, this is Eli for Mobox Graphics and this time we are going to take a look at how to create this ruby material. Also while we are at it we are going to add a nice animation to this, so that are the main two things I'm going to cover. So let's get started by creating a sphere object. Let's also go to display and enable the grad shading lines so we can see the polygons. Now down here in the attribute manager we can go to the type of the sphere and set it to icosahedron, that way you can see the polygons changed into triangles. But now if you would render this you can still see the sphere is perfectly smooth, but we want it to be more fragmented so let's disable the render perfect option, that way you can see it is getting a bit more sharp around the edges. So when that is done we have set up all the options of the sphere and we can make it editable by pressing C on the keyboard. Now let's go in the point mode so we can select some of these points which will be animated. If you want to keep this symmetrical this is quite a complex pattern. So what we are trying to achieve is selecting one point inside of a hectagon which of course is constructed out of six triangles. So if I select this one for example you can see when we move it outwards it will give this kind of pointy shape. So now we want to do this on many more points but we still want it to be symmetrical. So what I did is going in the front view and we will start with this center one. So to make this a bit easier, you can see this would be a hexagon, and this one would be a hexagon, and that one would be a hexagon. So this is maybe still a bit unclear to you, so I'm just going to paste in a sphere which I textured to show you exactly which hexagons can be selected. But you can also see there are some gray parts which are not being covered. Because it is not possible to select only hexagons on the sphere, there just aren't the exact amount of polygons to do this. So what you will be trying to do is selecting that one point at the center of the sphere in the front view and then you will start to select some rings of points actually which go around the sphere on both the axes and also make sure to do that on the other sides as well. And one more thing you will need to do is selecting the points in the hexagons which are blue in this case so that way you have most of the sphere covered up with nice symmetrical selections. So I am going to delete the sphere and do the selections on screen but I'm going to speed this up for you. Ok, so when you're done with that, you probably moved your camera in all possible directions and it may not be clear anymore from what direction you're looking at the sphere. So what you can do to fix that and go back to the original camera view is go into the menu of your viewport, click on view and click on frame default. That way it's back to the original position. So now let's go and pick the scale tool and scale this up so we can see if this is actually symmetrical and the selections are correct. And you can see I have one larger piece down here, which is not exactly right. That is because you can see we have two points which are right next to each other. There should be a point in between them. So let's deselect this one while holding Ctrl or Command and clicking on that point. And let's select another one which is a bit further away from it. Okay, when we scale this up now you can see this is perfectly symmetrical and we have a nice pointy shape. But let's undo this for now, so we have the sphere again. And now we are going to start with the animation. So let's right click on the sphere and go to character tags and choose the pose morph tag. Now down here you can set what kind of morph between two states of the object you will be going. And in this case we will be moving the points, so let's select the points option. And now you can see we have the base pose, so that is the sphere as it is right now. And we already have the pose 0, which is the second pose selected by default. So now we need to set this up in what we want the original sphere to be morphed to. So let's grab the scale tool again and just scale this up. And now let's go back to the pose morph tag by clicking on it again. So now if you go in the animate mode, you see we have this strength slider, which will control the animation between the two states we just created. So let's start with the animation actually. I'm going to make this 120 frames long. And let's set the first keyframe at zero strength, so it is a perfect sphere. And somewhere close to the middle we can make it 100% strength. And then finally we want it to go back to the sphere, so 0%. Let's make a quick adjustments on the positioning of these keyframes to make it a bit better. And there you have some kind of nice animation. Okay, so let's move on. One more thing I want to happen is that the sphere is spinning, so there is a bit more to look at. So let's set the first keyframe at frame 0 of course, at the original state. 
and then on the last frame we are going to rotate this on just the H and the B axis, not on the P axis, because if we also set a 360 degrees on that one, it will not really look like it is spinning anymore. So we have one full spin at the whole animation, but you can still see it is going slow at the beginning and the end of the animation, so that doesn't look that good. So let's select this keyframe by clicking on this small square, and we're going to set the interpolation from spline to linear. And let's also do this at the first keyframe. So this way if you play the animation again, you can see there is no variation in speed anymore. Okay, so that was the quick animation. Let's continue with the material of this. Of course, all the colors I'm going to choose can be swapped with anything you like, but I'm going for this ruby material. So let's set the color to some kind of red. And let's enable the transparency. In here we are going to set the refraction preset to glass, so that's close enough to a gem or a ruby. But now you can see we don't have any of the red color anymore, so let's go ahead and decrease the brightness of this transparency, so we can't see straight through it anymore. So something like 80% is good. And now we also want to set the absorption color to something which is red, but in this case I think something darker is a good option. Okay, let's drag this on the sphere and take a look how this looks. And you can still see this looks horrible. So one thing that is messing this up is that it is still way too smooth. We want nice straight lines on these pointy shapes. So let's go and click here on the font tag and delete this. That way when you render it, it will be perfectly sharp, but it is still not very transparent or it doesn't look like it is transparent. And that is because we need some kind of environment around it, which it can reflect and refract. So let's go ahead and create a sky object. And you could put an AGRI image on this, but in this case I found something else to look even better. Because if you use an HDRI image, it has a real environment, which is usually pretty sharp in the reflections, so you could see some kind of chair or a landscape in the reflections on this sphere. And it doesn't look that good in my opinion. So I wanted something more blurred. So what I did is just going on Google Images and search for a blur wallpaper. It doesn't even need to be an HDRI, just a normal JPEG is just enough. So I downloaded one of them and put it on a new material in the Luminance channel. So I went for this nice colorful one. Let's drag this on the sky object and take a look how this looks when we render again. And you can see this looks a bit more interesting right now. But you can also notice we have this wallpaper in the back of the sphere right now, which may not be what you're looking for. So let's right click on the sky object and select a compositing tag, so we can deselect the scene by camera option. Now it is also way easier to see where the reflections are going. So for example at the right side you can see we have a hint of blue on the sphere. Let's make some more adjustments on this ruby material. So what we are going to do is go in the reflectance channel and we can already get rid of this specular layer. And we are going to add a new one which will be just a default backman layer. And all the way at the bottom we are going to open this layer Fresnel menu and change the Fresnel to dielectric. That way you can see we have a nice shiny reflection on the sphere which isn't over the top. So let's render this again and take a look. And you can see the colors of the wallpaper which is wrapped around it are coming a bit more to life, but it is still not very convincing. So let's go back to the material and I'm going to set an interactive render region around this so you can see what happens in real time. And one first thing we are going to add to make this pop a bit more is adding the luminance channel. So in here this will be white by default. So let's change this to a dark red color. And we are also going to increase the brightness of this to give it a bit more punch because it's a dark color. Okay, so that is a bit more vibrant now. But everything still looks a bit too perfect. So I want a bit more imperfections to this. So let's go to the color channel to add these. And we're going to add a texture which will be stacked up in a layer. So let's create that layer, and in here we are going to create a first shader, which will be a Fresnel. You can keep everything on default for this one, but you can see we have a bit more variation in how the reflections look, so it already has a bit more depth to it. A second shader we are going to add is a noise shader. So let's go inside of that by clicking the thumbnail, and you can see by default this is a nice and blurry noise, so that is exactly what we need. But you can also see it is just a bit small on these speckles. So let's increase the global scale to something like 130%. And also the speckles are just a bit too grey, it's not strong enough. So let's go to the low clip option and increase that to give it a bit more contrast. Okay, let's go back to the layers. 
and we are going to change the mode of this noise of course because now we only see this noise and not the Fresnel. And we are also going to decrease the opacity of this to something like 75%. That way you can see it is blending into each other. Also while we are at it let's go back to the color channel on its own. So we can set the mixed mode to something like multiply. That way it's already a bit more realistic. And we're also going to decrease the mix strength of this to 50%, so we only have a hint of this texture on it. So you can see we have some imperfections now, but we're going to continue in this layer and add one more shader, which will be a gradient. Let's go inside of that and change this from 2D U to 2D Circular. And we're also going to change this gradient from a very bright grey to a slightly darker grey. Now let's also change the mode of this one to multiply. So we can see the two layers beneath it. Okay, so that is done. Let's go ahead and find a nice angle to look at this sphere. Because depending from which side you're looking at this, it will give a different reflection from the sky object. So what we need to do for this is going in this compositing tag we created and enable the scene by camera option. That way it is easier to find a nice direction to look at. And what I usually like to do for this kind of effect is looking towards something that is bright. So not the dark color, which we can see right now, but let's go to something of the brighter side. If you think that is a bit too much of refractions and reflections, you can also try to line up the brighter parts at the side of the sphere. So something like this. Let's also take a look how this looks if the sphere is still perfectly round. Okay, so I think I will be using this one. So let's disable the background again. That way it's also easier to see the reflections again on the sides of the sphere. But I still think this looks a bit flat, it doesn't have any power to it. So what I like to do to fix that is going in the render settings and because we have this luminance material on this we can go ahead and add a glow effect to this. In here you can play around with the settings but what I did is decreasing the intensity to something like 5% and increasing the size to something like 15%. That way you can see it looks a bit more vibrant and has a bit more power to it. Ok, one more thing I did to give this a bit more variation in the animation is adding some lights around this. So I want this to be dynamic, so what I did is creating a circle object. Let's also disable this render view for now. And I rotated it so it kind of lines up with the view, so we are looking at it from the front. And now let's add a light object, just the default one. And we are going to right click on this and go to Cinema 4D Text so we can add the Align to Spline tag. Now with this tag still selected, you can go ahead and drag this circle object as the spline path. That way the light is always lined up with the circle. And while we are at it, we are also going to add a second light on this, so just duplicate the first one. That way it's also aligned to the circle. Now for this one, you want to go in the Align to Spline tag and change the position value, so it's somewhere on the other side of the circle. That way if you render this, you should see some kind of differences at the sides of the sphere, but in this case maybe not strong enough, so let's select both the lights and change the intensity to something like 200%, so it is twice as strong. Ok, so this looks pretty nice, but to take full advantage of this effect, we want these lights to move around the sphere. So the easiest way to do this is just animating this circle. So let's go to frame 0 again and create a first keyframe. And at frame 120 I want to have some rotation on this. In this case we will not be animating on the B axis, because that way it will also counter the other animation. So the rule of thumb is to just animate on two axes. In this case you can also see by default we have some different values on some of the axes. So that is because we rotated the circle to line up with the view. So that means we need to add 360 degrees on this instead of just changing this into 360. Create a keyframe and take a look. You can also see this is speeding up and slowing down in the animation because of the splines. So let's go ahead and select the keyframe again and change the interpolation to linear again. And that way we will have a bit more dynamic lighting to the animation. Ok, one more optional thing we can do is adding a different background behind the sphere. So let's create a new material. And in this case I think it looks nice if we make this some kind of dark blue, which is close to grey. And we are going to add a gradient texture to this which we will set to the 2D circular type. And I'm also going to right click on this gradient so I can invert the knots. This way we have this vignette effect. And I'm just going to decrease the mix strength of this so it is a bit more see-through. Let's add this on the background. 
and that way you can see we have a nice contrast between the object and the background. If you want to render out this animation now, you make sure you go to the render settings and set the output from current frame to preview range. And that way you're sure everything will be rendered out. Also one more thing you can do if you still don't like the intensity or the brightness or the saturation of this, you can already go ahead and make some adjustments on this while it is rendering. So let's go to the filter tab and enable the filter and in here you can just adjust some sliders to make it look exactly like you wanted to. Okay so that is all I wanted to cover this time. Of course as always you can download these files on our Patreon page. Also if you enjoyed this video leaving a like means a lot to us. And apart from that, I hope to see you in the next video.